Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, be comfortable yourself and relax your body. And keep your back straight, neck head straight in one line and your right palm on your left. So gently close your eyes and bring attention to this bell sound. And while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. So do nothing extra. Just follow the sound, please. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Homage to the Blessed one, the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So dear Dhamma practitioners, before we start our practice session, as usual we'll take few minutes from the beginning to understand how this practice will help for us to to develop our inner wisdom. So when it comes to inner wisdom, it is not the very conventional level of understanding. There is something you have to have more deeper and at the same time, it is your own responsibility. You have to do it just by yourself. We can help to give certain tools and we can show you the way, but it is your own responsibility to walk on this path. So when it comes to the world, even though we are not ready to accept, we all know this world itself is a struggle. And this is not a safe place. And we always face with this uncertainty. Another thing is, even though we feel kind of like comfortable around us, we all know deeper in our heart, this nothing is belong to us. But still, in our dreams, in our desires, in our visualizations, we create kind of like our own life. But when it comes to the reality, every day we experience the change. But sometimes it's not easy to accept. So then we always try to bring our inside experience to the outside world and sometimes what we see from this outside we try to bring it to inside. So this transaction, this business, and this communication create a kind of like the our self-centered view as I am or the me. So this itself take us to kind of like a misunderstanding. So the meditation itself is a method to take us deeper to understand what is the truth. It is not easy. to Even though truth is there, even though truth is every, that everywhere, even though truth is around us, even though we, truth, we experience the truth, to understand it, you have to be matured. That you have to gain by practice. So that's why we 
bringing this different different tools or the opening different windows and showing you different direction to somehow getting to this deeper truth. So when it comes to the world, even though we know it is suffering, we, we don't want to accept it. So what is the meaning of suffering? So suffering means itself is a struggle, as I mentioned. Another thing is change. So what is the reason for this the change or what is the reason for this unsatisfaction? What is the bottom line? Why this we, we experience as suffering? Why we experience this as a struggle? Why this world we take as a kind of like a difficult? So there is a, the method that Buddha mentioned that you have to deeply understand reason for suffering. So when it comes to that, it called upadi, sabbang upadi pachaya. So that means this everything, all the suffering arise as a result of upadi. So upadi is a kind of like a, the the meaning. It's like a, the underlying layer or the substance or the rock bottom of this all or the foundation or the basis of suffering. So, this upadi, the arise as a reason of the bottom, the very rock bottom of this suffering, very bottom of the difficulty, arise as a result of ignorance. Sabbang upadi pachaya. So, this all related to the very bottom line related to upadi, the upadi itself means the ignorance. So there are few categories when it comes to the upadi that uh, mental formations, our five aggregates and the karma and the phenomena. So there, there are many ways that the ignorance hold us. The ignorance is not a kind of like a, something that you can separate from other things. But when it comes to this, the world is itself has uh, its nature to change. Even ourselves, we have the nature to change. But uh, still, how this ignorance arise? It's deeper your own understanding. And that understanding, it's kind of like, a, look, this nowadays, it's rainy. It's, you can't do, you can't hate for that or you can't love it because it's, it's part of the nature. But it is, there is a capability for yourself, take a, an umbrella and stay away from getting wet. So it, it's nothing to do hating or loving the rain. So you are capable to, to handle yourself and get out of that whatever the outcome. So like that, even the world, world has a nature, if you have the very awareness yourself, you are capable to get out of that, the world is suffering or the world in nature. But the problem is, that whatever happened outside, we take it as our inside. So, and uh, it's another way, this subject, our eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, consciousness, and uh, object, eye, object, ear, object, nose, object, tongue, object, and the mind, object. So we, we take this subject and object as one. 
So that is one thing that we have to deeply understand. That's why that all the struggle happens. That's why this all the, the difficulties arise in us. That's why all the suffering arise in us. We take the subject and the object as one. So according to that, we develop our self-centered view, I am. So that itself, the very bottom level of the, the ignorance. And it has two characters when it comes to the ignorance, not knowingly reasons. What are that two characters? It is very important to know that. One is, it takes away from the truth, the ignorance. Ignorance has power to take you away from the truth, separate from the truth, divorce from the truth. And then you, when you caught up on ignorance, more and more and more you go towards ignorance. So that's why always you have to be very careful. Even though so far we came in this ignorance journey, it is your responsibility have the effort to get out of it. Why? Because it's it can take you away from the truth. It can cover the truth. And other one is the Another most dangerous part of this ignorance, it has ability to take the untruth as truth. That create all the mess around us. That create most of the difficulties around us. And even just imagine in a family, in everybody sees something as truth. It's really that is the truth in a very conventional level of example. And what is whatever the right or the whatever the wholesome, whatever profitable. But maybe if one person in a family hold it to ignorance, that person can destroy that entire family and give pain to everybody. So that's the power of ignorance. And once the person take the untruth as truth, it is very difficult to get that person out of it because he believes the ignorance as truth. So then, without any deeper personal effort, the person can't get out of it. That's why always you have to have the ability to listen, look around and look into deeper yourself and evaluate yourself that your own understanding and look at the, the other people and see if there are anything else and why it happened that way. So somehow, this two nature, one is take you away from the truth and other one is take the untruth as truth, take the ignorance as truth, take us more deeper into this dark, difficult human nature. And we create our life more difficult and more miserable more painful, more fearful ourselves by being with this ignorance. So then if you have the self-compassion, the very best thing, best thing that you can do, take you out of the ignorance. So sometimes we see when there are kind of like a, Situation happens, shooting happens if the terrorists attack. And uh, sometimes it's a breaking news, say, the under attack, in danger. So like that, deeply what happens, 
in, during this time, all our, this humanity, kind of like uh, under attack, your, your wisdom un, in under attack, your wisdom in danger by ignorance everywhere. Especially with this information world and always we see that it's kind of like things, information keep coming to us to take us away from the truth. So then anymore we can't trust the news, anymore we can't trust the social medias, even we can't trust any kind of that whatever we see through these screens. So that disconnection, discomfort, take us to, to fear and the unsatisfaction. So then again and again and again, we go into kind of like a create kind of like a dark environment around us. So then it is your personal responsibility to bring this wisdom path and more and more get out of the ignorance and become wiser. So how you can do that? That's why you have to have some kind of self-practice. So observing and not to become hurry to react and create a kind of like a gap in between experience and reactions. And at the same time, withdraw from emotional reactions. So that kind of things you can apply. But at the same time, you have to deeply practice to observe your own feelings. So that's why the meditation is important. So when it comes to this ignorance, then as I mentioned, this upadi has few categories. So one is called that klesha upadi, mental defilement. So kind of like lust, greed, anger, self-view, egocentric mind, fear. So these kind of things, if you look around yourself, why it became the very bottom level of foundation of your life, the most of time, in day-to-day -day life, with our eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, that whatever the information we collect, deeply connected to the these reasons. Maybe the greed, or the maybe the lust. Look into yourself, or maybe the fear, or maybe the self-centered view. So that is the bottom line. And then again and again and again, out of that bottom level of experience, then we again react with our bodily, verbally, mentally actions. So then what you collect and you give back with the, the self-centered view, the greed, hatred, anger, jealousy, and the fear. So this kind of way. So then again, it bounces back and giving back. So like that, we keep rolling, 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 rolling the same reason. And the other one is that this skandha upadi, so the five aggregates, form, feeling, perception, volition, and recognition. And that is where that we always think that what we experience inside is really happening outside. And the subject and object we take as same. But it is not like that. What you experience inside is not is happening, not happen in the outside. So this separation will help you too. 
take you out from the 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 very continuous existence the self development with the the life so if you if you know that what you experience inside has a re, that the connect with your past experience and then that what is happening in the outside is separate from your moment of experience anymore you are not going to react with the self-centered view this separation so it, you have to have the awareness and the clarity to separate this another one is called the abhisankara so that's mean the karma or the the action reaction result connection and sometimes if you look very carefully there are certain actions that we have done because of that outcome we still keep doing certain things but if you come to the very present moment of awareness you are capable to change anything so don't depend on your past experience even though you may made you made mistakes you have done many other things maybe it's an unwholesome action or maybe really you thought something as truth but it is not the truth and because of that evidence you have done certain things but now you understand it is wrong so now you are capable to see that your actions your past actions you have done by mistake or it, so it is not valid anymore so then don't keep continue that and don't depend on that past experience as a human being you are capable to change your life by taking very conscious decision so that is a very important part this is the this is what when it come to practice meditation help for you there is always newness in you but most of time as human beings we are kind of like a package come bring from the history take from the history we have a backpack that we always take the, the the memory related to past we mostly depend we take decisions we live with the past memory because of that it keep continue it keep happening so then look into yourself and see is there any way that you can take a very brand new conscious decision without depending your past experience now according to the necessary course and conditions if you are capable to take decisions then slowly you disconnect from that previous this past habitual patterns so in that way you create a very new way of living and you are capable to change this all if you are suffering then you you no need to suffer because of that what you have done if there is a fear then you no need to depend on that fear if there is a failure you no need to depend on that failure if there is a difficulty you no need to keep continue that difficulty but most of time our failure our fear unhappiness unsatisfaction arise not because of the outright outside reasons the inside we keep continue the same thing again and again and again so then look into yourself and that itself kind of like an introspection and then take a very conscious decision be hard on you don't keep continue if something is unsuccessful 
and get out of your comfort zone and start to look around and take a very brand new way of a start. You are capable to do that. You are more higher than what you think. So you are capable to bring something more profitable to you. There is a more deeper, beautiful creativity that you have within yourself. But most of the time, our own memory become a barriers to us. Our own believing system take us away from the reality or the truth or the, the, the light. Our own habitual patterns take us to darkness. Say that's why you are responsible for whatever that you go through. Take that responsibility and then you are capable to change it. And the other one is called this Sankhara Upadi. So the all phenomena of existence and that anything originated or condition that created the related to our life, sometimes we claim as ours, but it is not yours. So when you claim something that related to outside as yours, so that misunderstanding take you to suffering. So then finally, when it when it comes to this all, this everything really belongs to heat, motion, liquidity, and hardness. There's nothing belong to you. So as we know that when it comes to this physical world, we can break it down to certain particles, properties. The very bottom level, physically we can take it to the atom. An atom we can take to subatomic particles and then electron, neutron, proton. And then we can take it down, we can break it, separate and then quarks. So then we can take it down and break it to string, the vibration. So that is the very bottom level of this all, vibration, energy. So why it vibrate? There is a reason to vibrate because it not happened just itself without any reason. Why, why this uh, you have the life? Because that is the very bottom level of life. It vibrates because of the heat. That is the beauty of this earth. Because we are getting enough sunlight. And that's create the, the, the life around us. In case if you are go far away, far away from the sun, you are not capable to have this kind of physical body, even though you have energy, maybe because when it go to the, the very cold environment, what happens? This, the string, the vibration is start to expand, expand, expand. And the very format or the, format, uh, the, the pattern of the the physical become different. So whatever the, the cold environment has ability to change the shape or the pattern. So you get these old patterns, the physical structure because of the heat. So then Finally, this, this life is not belong to you. So that's why in the ancient time, people used to worship the sun and moon. And that's why some times in these human civilizations, people used to believe 
the son as God or the creator. Because it gives the heat. It gives the, the shape. It gives the pattern to you. So somehow, this anything is not belong to you. This everything belong to heat, motion, liquidity and hardness. So then, if you take, if you hold that as yours, one day you're going to get hurt. It, be, it become difficult, especially that uh, if you start to love something. So then remember, it's nothing wrong that you love something or somebody with one condition. You can love that person or the, you can love that thing and knowingly, it is not yours. Then it's going to be okay. But by the time, if you love that person or the thing, believing it is mine, you're going to get hurt. So that's why the Buddha mentioned, Premato Jayati Soko. So then all these desires, in the likeness can take you to hurt, difficulty or the suffering. Why? Because fundamentally, the very bottom level, you have to remember that what we experience is not belong to us. This will, this all experience as a result of cause and conditions. And keep it as an experience. Don't claim that anything as yours. Even though that idea come as me, that also may become as a result of cause and conditions. Keep it as a question mark. and Because to understand it, you, you have to take a more deeper practice. So you can keep it as a question mark. So whatever you experience, you feel, you feel, you believe, you see, it's, it's kind of like you see it's there, it's, it's mine. Maybe it's come as a result of course and conditions. So that's why practicing meditation will take you deeper to see this picture. See this mirage. See this beautiful, the artwork come out of the theater, the canvas, the movie. And then nothing wrong that you enjoy that, but you have to have some wisdom to know what is truth. Once you have it, you are more capable to to enjoy and experience life than you experience it today. So that's why the, when you come to the wisdom, when you are in this wisdom path, you're not going to lose anything, but you're going to find what you miss. Because you really miss you didn't see the very real beauty of this world because of the ignorance. You didn't enjoy this world because of the ignorance. So once you come to the wisdom path, once you have that wisdom, once you know the truth, you are the right person to, to see this everything as it is. So it is worth for you to to find that just by your own effort. So with that, let's get into practice a little bit now. So your right palm on your left neck, head straight in one line and be comfortable with your posture. Scan head to toes yourself and say, So Patveva, oh, may I be well and happy three times.
take a moment and think. We gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge. In this moment with this sitting, may my body become more comfortable, may my breath be more smooth, may no difficulties come to me, may all the success come to me. Also think for a moment, this is the last moment we are spending in this very lifetime. And detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment observing your sensation in front of your nose and upper lip area. And experience always the newness. Very brand new moment you have with each and every inhalation and exhalation. If your mind go here and there, bring it back again and again and settle down with that sensation. Do nothing extra. So in the beginning, deeply and gently breathing, breathe out three times and find the sensation, please. And allow your inhalations, exhalations happen itself. Don't disturb that natural process. Bring your attention to your body, please. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe. Also, as far as you can, through galaxies, other planets, stars. Reminding yourself like this, with clear intention, mentally, repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Beings who are pretty low, strong, tall or short, Big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away, already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. forward, visualize yourself and send it as a light. To your backside.
to your left side. And to your right side. Downward. And upward. To all six directions at once. Like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it, with the maximum effort to the highest, wishing yourself, may all living beings in this universe be well and happy. Say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So first of all, we offer this practice to the great qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. Also by the power of this meritorious deed, may all of us attain to the supreme bliss of Nibbana. May all your guardian angels and deities will receive these merits and increase their longevity and protect all of you from any kind of planetary influences or any ill effects. Ittavata cha mehi sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva numodantu sabba sampatti siddhiya sabbe bhuta numodantu sabba sampatti siddhiya sabbe satta numodantu sabba sampatti siddhiya Imaya Dhamma Anu Dhamma Bhati Bhattiya Buddham Pujemi Dhammang Pujemi Sanghang Pujemi Adhaya Imaya Bhati Bhattiya Jati Jaravya Adi Maranam Ha Paribunjissami Idam Me Punya Kammang Asavakya Vahang Hotu Sabba Dukkha Pamunchatu Bless you.